I'm on. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just uh, let everybody know that the, the players pick the, the format. So. The, the players pick the, yeah, format? the format? Okay, I will. I will. Yeah, the tournament tomorrow is all APA. But they pick this. So. I'm cool with it because they're the ones uh, playing for the tournament. Okay. <laughs> hey, just have fun. Gee whiz. We got people on here. Let's see. Yeah, we do. Five so far. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Chief Johnny Nigas here live at Bradley Billiard Club. We're about to begin pretty shortly the uh, Scotch Triples uh, Scotch Triples competition between Bradley Billiard Club and Chalk It Up in Mantino. Let me know before we start uh, what the video and audio sounds like. <laughs> Anybody go ahead and send me a message on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch. Let me know how it sounds, please. Hey Kirby, how are you? Did you get your stuff? Kirby's our friend from Maine. He found us by accident, and I'm glad he did. Kirby and Angel from Madison, Maine. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hey John. John Butts, my uh, straight pool buddy. Thank you. Now, we, we're supposed. Jimmy showed me how to add some music in the background. Can you guys hear uh, music coming through the stream? It doesn't come through my headphones. And if so, is it is it too loud? Let me know how it's supposed to be added. And what what that does is it's supposed to keep us from getting kicked off or uh, the copyright thing uh, from from them muting our videos in the future. So it's kind of cool if it works. I just want to make sure it's not too loud for you guys at home, okay? Let me know if you hear music, uh, not in the background here at the pool hall, but it would be different than what you guys normally have heard before. It, it should be piped through in the stream itself. Can you guys hear music at all? Bueller. So they have Metallica playing here in the pool hall. I'm not talking about the metallic. I'm talking about something that's being streamed in through the electronics. Let me know. So there's eight of you here. Uh, come on, somebody, let me know. John says, no music. All right, let's see what I can do here. Hold on. Kirby, have not received them yet. yet. Uh, it made to the post office. Uh, waiting for... Okay, all right. And uh, YouTube, here's Metallica. Tough stuff. Hey, so, hey listen, tough stuff. I'm glad you're here. Um, I have your uh, the stuff you won. Um, like Kirby, hey, you guys want a packet uh, of, our, of our merch? I don't have an address for you, and when I went back to look at the comments, I can't read 
YouTube comments uh, historically. Like like Facebook will keep them for me. I can go to Facebook and, and read comments from a video from last week if I or last month if I wanted to. Um, I'm gonna give you my uh, my cell number. Tough stuff. Seven seven three seven five eight seven six six five. Go ahead and shoot me a uh, a text message with your name, and uh, we'll work out arrangements how I can ship out your stuff. If you're local, I can meet you, but if you're, uh, I can ship it if you're far away. Want we'll to make sure you get that for Christmas in time for Christmas. Throw in your stockings. Compliments of uh, Jimmy Hannis, the original Calcutta Kid, and Chief. Adam Tom, I like how the name is still up there. Oh, yeah, I got to change that out. Thanks, Adam. So Adam and I played at uh, Corner Tap. That's from Corner Tap last, last week. Let me change that out real quick. Thank you, sir. Go here. And what I'll do is I'm just going to put up the, the, the bar name or the pool hall name. So Bradley Billiards. Club, billiard club. And then I will put chalk it up in red. All right. Hey, I'm going to do this too. One second, folks. Um, I'm going to give you guys this. Oh, the score thing? Yeah, because you got it. Take, uh, if I lose power, I'm gonna take a picture over there. Electronically, we'll lose the scoreboard. Yeah, no problem. We'll set it up right there. I have, I have. Um, we can Brad, set it up right Bradley there. is blue. B, B. Okay. Chalk it up is uh, red. Okay. They want to do a picture. Are you about ready? Eric Turner and uh, the two teams from Chalk It Up Billiards and uh, Chalk It Up and, and uh, Bradley Billiards. You guys are playing here, right? Yes. On three? Yes. Okay. Hold on one second. I just got a little smidge on the on the camera. It's gone now. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. All right, there's a little blemish on the screen on the camera. I can't get it off right now, but I'm gonna let them play. 
Uh, they're going to lag for the first break, and they're going to maintain. That's Peter on the left and Rick on the right. They're going to play a Scotch Triples race to 11. And the winner of this race to 11 will get the stream tomorrow. What that means is Eric Turner has a uh, Christmas extravaganza, Scotch Doubles, at both Chalk It Up and Bradley. But there's only one of me, and they both wanted the stream. So in order to settle that, they had a uh, this tournament here today in order to determine who gets the who gets the stream tomorrow. I think it's kind of cool. They're fighting over me. I feel special. Uh, so Adam Thomas and I, I, I end up uh, chopping with him, uh, let him, let him have my win because I was tired. Uh, he ended up going on to win a, a bunch more money, and I said, goodness, if I had stayed in the tournament, I would have won all that money too. So Adam and I are going to play, I think, after this. We'll play probably if I feel if I feel up to it, we'll play. Uh, yeah, Kirby and Andy, um, Andy Knive. Uh, this is from uh, last stream, or maybe two streams ago, right, Kirby? You you may have already received your sweatshirt, your hoodie, uh, Kirby. This is just the uh, towel, the power bank, and the um, glove. So if you're not familiar with the format, Scotch Triples is basically like Scotch Doubles. Let me grab a chair here for a second. Can I get one of those chairs? Those tall ones? These are kind of like uh, miniature chairs. Thanks. I just need one. Thank you. Oh, is that my beer? Uh, yeah. Beer and cookies. Oh, oh, oh. All right, so what I'll do is I'll type the names of the players on the screen itself so you know. You don't have to keep going back out to look at the uh, description of the tournament. But I do, have it, I do have it listed there as well. This is Rick from Chalk It Up. He's the owner, one of the owners. And uh, Rick is playing with Maurice Runnels and... I got a peek, sorry. Rich Nashkoff, Ken Velisca, and Maurice Runnels. Uh, Bradley is going to be Peter Korsgaard, the owner, Brian Kara, and Jeff Long. So it's going to be a great, a great uh, event. Scotch triples is like Scotch doubles in that you have to alternate turns, but in Scotch triples can be a little more confusing because they have to maintain this order throughout the entire night, which means uh, there are some formats of Scotch doubles, like if, if me and my partner, let's say I was playing with Jeff, and I made the eight ball, I, every game is independent sometimes, right? So if I made the eight ball, I could, I could break the next game, and each game would be its own order, if you will. But they've already decided that once they start this order, it's going to stay this way the entire... For if, if they happen to shoot out of... Either team happens to shoot out of turn, it will become ball in hand for the incoming team. Now they're having some discussion with her about something. I'm not sure. All right, so... Um, So red goes to one. Hey guys. I would have done it, but I, want, I don't want you guys to forget it every time. Every once nope. in a while I get it. Just flip the whole flip thing the whole over. Stack. Flip the whole stack over. 
There you go. Thank you. All right, so chalk it up is at one already. That was quick. This is a race to 11. Kathy Velisca, good luck to everyone, especially Ken, Rick, and Maurice from CIU. Chalk it up. Uh-oh, that's ball in hand. That cue ball went off the table. That player is... I'll get everyone's name in a second. That's Brian Kara. So Peter is the owner for, of uh, Chalk It Up. He's, he's the fellow with the white hair and the glasses. And uh, his players are going to be Ken, uh, Brian Kara and Jeff Long. Andy says we'll be done about 9.30. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We've already got uh, 36 people watching. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Again, I'm John Enigas. I'm uh, Chief, host of Calcutta Kid today here live at Bradley Billiard Club for Eric Turner's Scotch Triples. This, The winner of this match will determine where the stream is held tomorrow. Do you want to get on? Yeah, that's a bit easier. So, uh, that's Eric Turner walking behind me here. Electronics. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Let me turn this so you can see. Um, Rosalind Crowder King, how are you? Good luck, everyone, especially Maurice, Rick, and Ken, okay? Hey, Ross. Mm. All right, let me turn this so you can, can see. Mm. There. Let's get you in there. Oh, yeah. I'll turn. Uh, I gotta come this way. Yeah, I'll just go back here. And, uh... I got the mic in the right spot where to... to yeah, cool. you're fine. Sorry, I got the sniffle. Yeah, I, I, I hear you got a yeah. little cold there coming on. No, huh? it's my... Uh, I have seasonal allergies. They do this to me every year. So it's just literally right here in the middle of my face. Oh, so, sorry, buddy. I've had the sniffles for about three days. Uh, my daughter had the flu. Uh, she's really? a nurse. She, had, she was in a bed for four days, yeah. and she's fine now, but... And she had the COVID test taken twice. It wasn't COVID, so... Yeah, just the good old-fashioned flu. Good old-fashioned flu, man. I think the flu in some ways is worse, because, I mean, you're throwing up, and you're... Oh, it's it so was. Bad. It was bad for her. She had the body aches and everything. Yeah, body aches. You got, uh, you know, your stomach's all messed up. You can't eat. It's terrible. Right, right, right. I've been lucky, knock on wood. I haven't had that version of the flu in a very long time. It's got to be awful. What I'll do is... Uh, if you don't mind just watching the screen for a, watch the table for a second, I'm gonna copy this. Copy, paste, bring you down. Okay, Bradley Billiard Club is uh, Peter Korsgaard. Yep. Peter, I'll just do. I'll, I'll do. Yeah. I'll do the last names. Cores Guard. Yep. Brian Cara. Brian Cara. K A R A. And, and Jeff Long. Jink, thank you, Jeff Long. One, two, three, four, five. Chalk it up. One, two, three, four, five. Chalk it up. It is Rick Nash Koff. Rick Nash Koff. Yep. Maurice Rolls. Thank you. Oh, no, this, the order's different. Oh, uh, Ken Velisca? Yeah, I think that's their order. Ken Velisca. I want to write it down the right order. Gotcha. Velisca and Maurice Reynolds. Maurice Reynolds, yep. The one and only. That whole, that whole family shoots good pool. Oh, they shoot good pool. One, two, three, four, I got five. To, one, two, three, about four, two five. months ago, I got to play. Uh, I, he was up at Chalk It Up when we were shooting Double Jeopardy one day. Oh, wow. And he was just in there. He was back in town, and I got to shoot him on the nine-footer up there for a little while, and I beat him the first game. I was happy as hell. And then uh, I had a chance in the second game. I missed the shot, and then I didn't win. I racked for him about 12 times in a row. <laughs> I shook his hand. Like, thanks, Eck. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he's a uh, man. He shoots it. His uh, precision with the cue ball is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Like, I use low right. He uses an exact amount of low right. You know, it, it's it's so. Yeah, yeah, I get it's it. It's so much more uh, under, so much 
a, such a better understanding of the game. Alright, bring this over here. I just gotta move the screen around a little bit, so just give me a second. I'll, I'll keep yapping. People are used to me talking. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite pastimes. I can't speak to uh, Brian and uh, uh, Jeff Long on uh, Bradley Billiard's team, but uh, Maurice has been shooting absolutely lights out here lately. His, the best game I've ever seen Murray shoot here lately. Really? And uh, Ken Villisca is, uh, he's like, you know how that, but you know, you go from the, uh, uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, dang it, I'm trying to tell a story and I can't, can't tell the story. Uh, goes out of the cocoon, he turned into a butterfly. His, uh, his game is really, really improved. I've, it's like literally in the last couple months, maybe three months, Ken's just turned into, he, he really has turned into a butterfly. And his nine game ball, his, his nine ball game is absolutely nuts. Really? I don't, I don't know what it is. He is a, his nine ball game is crazy. That's cool. He's a, I think he found his niche. <laughs> Sorry for the sniffles, folks. You're good, you're good. Yeah, Jeff and uh, Brian, though, they shoot solid pool. I can't, can't knock them. Hey, Kenny, just let me know where you're going, brother. I've had the pleasure of having racks ran by both of them on many occasions on me. Can you call a hit? Sure. Yeah, I can call a hit, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go you, ahead, can, go ahead, Chief. you can do it. Go ahead, Chief. Go ahead. I'll talk. You guys are stuck with me for a minute. You, you, you want me calling it, or do you want yeah. him calling it? That's just fine. I trust both you guys. Yep. She's going to call a hit for him. Uh, make sure it's a, a legit hit since the belt balls are touching. It should be just fine the way Ken's shooting at it. He's going to try to spin it. I'm sorry, Ken. I thought you were shooting I thought I did. Do you want to share? Oh, no, I'm going to just talk for another couple minutes. i got to start setting up the raffles. <laughs> my, uh, my one buddy is uh, on his way up here. As soon as he gets here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop off. Uh, I have some things I can give you. I don't have nothing big. Uh, I have gloves, towels, p uh, power banks. I might have some stickers like this. We're grateful for anything you give okay, us. Okay, yeah. yeah I, absolutely. We, don't, we just don't, at the moment, we don't have anything oh, any, no. any substantial yet. You give us one thing, you're, that's, uh, okay. the, the, <laughs> it'll help. We're not going to argue with anything. This is, a, this is for charity. and. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go over and work on the uh, raffle table for a bit, and then I'll come back over and Okay, I'll, I'll have to go outside and get my uh, other bin, so um, if they take a break, just give me about five, ten minutes to do that. Okay, can do. Or maybe at the end, however you want to do it. Can do. Will you be here at the end? Oh, yeah, I'm going to stay until this is done, then i got to head up and chalk it up and get their tables. Set okay, up. gotcha. It's going to be a late evening for me. You know, I should text my wife and let her know to look, because my uh, five-year-old daughter would love seeing me on here. That'd be cool. Yeah, so do that. I'll, I'll do that, and then uh, when I get done, I'll come back. So, Kathy Velisca, who's here, by the way, she's yep. right over there, is the math teacher in Ken and the Cojones. What? It's oh, the math teacher. I think she's uh, might be referring to my uh, comment on his game. Oh, hi, Lisa. How are you? Hey, Lisa. Lisa's game's uh, improving a lot here. She's been taking lessons from Eric Noretto. She was just showing yeah. off her, uh, her, her, her score uh, score sheet at, on uh, Facebook. Yep. What was that? I didn't see it. What was that? Uh, she, did, she did good, I guess. Uh, Cody Zlinski, what's up, Cody? Kyle Gray, what's up, Kyle? Miss you. We should be here. You should be here, buddy. Oh, I see Kathy and Kyle got a little uh, bet going on the evening. <laughs> a little side action. I love it. And uh, just for everybody to know, uh, since we're talking about the key raffles and the cues, uh, we've got two Joss cues, uh, one at each Bradley and Chalk, and we've got two Pea Showers, one at Chalk and one at And I saw them. They're beautiful. Bradley. So really nice cues. 
Uh, the pea showers are going to be 20 bucks a ticket, and the jostles are going to be $10 a ticket. Nice. And that'll all start tomorrow. We're going to draw, do all the raffle drawings tomorrow evening, 6, 7 o'clock. Round the board, boys. Round the board. <laughs> It's a 1-1. One, one. One, one. Okay. I figured this would be a really, really solid right That's the right you fired off in space. It's only the second game. Third game, third game. This is now the third game. Yeah. The score is 1-1. One, one. So it's their break. There it is. Give me one sec, Chris. Almost done. My buddy just showed up, so I'm going to bounce yeah. out. All right, and, uh, I'll be back before I head up to uh, chalk it up. So. Yeah, make sure you get your daughter watching. Uh, yeah, we will. Come I, will. In here. I will definitely. All right, sure. brother. Yeah, leave it here. You can come back and grab it anytime. All right, so uh, Eric Turner, ladies and gentlemen. Here's your beer, buddy. They're good. Lisa said she won her USAPL playoff match last night. Yeah. And then won her APA match. Nice. Taco Buto, what's up, my friend? No, this is not Fargo rated, man. This is just... Um, um, so Eric Turner, the one we just had on, on, the, on the mic here, he is the Kankakee Valley APA rep now out this way. And what he's doing is he's having a huge pool tournament slash fundraiser tomorrow at, at both Chalk It Up Billiards here and... No, no, uh, Bradley Billiard Club here and Chalk It Up Billiards in Mantino. Excuse me, I forget where I'm at sometimes. Um, there's only one streamer, me. What of the, I think it's 64 teams, something like that. 32 teams here, 32 teams over at the other place. But they're about seven miles apart, these two pool halls. Seven, eight miles, whatever. Um, bo both owners wanted me at their place. It's kind of nice to be fought over. It's, it's, it makes you feel good. So... Playfully, they said, well, we should have a tournament and decide who the winner gets. And they're like, yeah, let's do it. So Eric Turner got together with Peter's Course Guard and Rich Nashkoff and said, let's do this. And I'm like, they're actually fighting over who, not, not, not mean, but not physically, just they want they want to have the stream at their pool hall. So I'm like, well, I got to stream the the tournament that that determines where you have the, the uh, stream. So... Why we're here. Um, pretty, pretty neat. Anyway, James Miller, what's up, buddy? James Miller, I'm at Bradley Billiard Club, pal. So James moved out to uh, what the heck city is that again? In Indiana, he's he's farther south than Cedar Lake. Um, you said the name and I forgot used to live out by us near Chicago and now he moved he and Darlene moved, Lake Village thank you he moved up to Lake Village Indiana and uh, I go you know this pool hall that I go to in, Man in uh, Bradley it's not very far from you it's only about a half hour whereas pockets for him where we play James and I play not on the same team out of different teams but he's like uh, yeah that would be a lot closer for me so uh, we're here, James. Come on by. You and Darlene, come on by. Check it out, man. Great people here. Peter and uh, Bobby and Blaine. Great people here. James says he'll check it out next weekend. Okay. Yeah, pretty cool place. They just got rid of all their valley tables, and they got 14, I think 14, uh, diamond tables it's beautiful um 
I want to say the only table that's not a diamond, they have one nine foot um, uh, gold crown in the, in the other side. The, the bar kind of cuts the pool hall in half. That's delicious. Scott Schaefer. What's up, Scott? My friend from Peoria. Merry Christmas, Scotty. Yeah. Well, I won't be, yeah, I won't be at uh, Rax until after the first of the year. So, yes, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, buddy. Oops. Ken missed the, wait, it's actually not a bad leave. He hit the point of the side pocket. Ten ball came back and kind of stuck on the cue ball a little bit. So Peter's got a, a rough go here. Oh, he says he can see the six ball. Never mind. And if you guys are wondering, uh, even though this Eric Turner's an APA rep, uh, the the two teams have has decided the two teams have decided to play ACS rules just for tonight. They're all six skill level or seven skill level players so they wanted to use the uh, ACS rules for they, they like the fact that the tables open on a break they don't want to win or lose on, a, on an eight ball break okay um, they want to be able to use jump cues so they understand that the tournament tomorrow is going to be APA rules but for today they wanted to shoot with the ACS rule. Um, if this, if there's a, there's an accelerated rule too for for ACS uh, in tournaments. Um, if there's a scratch on the break, it's ball in hand anywhere on the table. Uh, ordinarily, it would just be ball in hand in the kitchen. But for today, they're using ACS, and the scratch on the break is ball in hand also. So this this race to eleven, especially with these six players. They're all very good, accomplished players, very talented players. It shouldn't take very long. Um, yeah, Jessica Ray, uh, Headspace, th th thank you. So, uh, so Jessica Ray is telling me that, uh, hey, what's up, Rob? Um, the tournament tomorrow uh, by Eric Turner between the two pool halls is generating, it's a, it's a fundraiser to generate money for Toys for Tots, which is a great organization, and Project Headspace. So next time Eric comes over, he can tell me, I know what Toys for Tots is, but I'm unfortunately not very familiar with Project Headspace and timing, so um, let him tell us about that. If, if someone wants to jump on, Jessica, Ray, if, or someone else wants to jump on and tell me what Project Headspace is, by all means, go ahead. Um, it keeps me talking. 45 people watching this match, which I think is pretty darn cool. Um, Lisa Blanchett says Project Headspace and timing is benefits vets like me with PTSD. Rocco Manzella. What's up, Rocco? Rocco Manzella? I mean, if there wasn't a tougher sounding name than Rocco Manzella, I don't know what it is, man. And he's, Rocco's like one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life. But he's got like the toughest name ever. Uh, Blaine says uh, Project Headspace and timing Fat, P-H-A-T, pretty hot and tempting, was founded to promote positive mental health and practices to our nation's veterans by working to unify them with their communities, nature, and themselves. Excellent. Project Headspace is a veteran organ. This is Christopher Scott. Chris is here, isn't he? Yeah, he's here. Project Headspace is a veteran organization that supports veterans and veteran families from community bonding to mental awareness. Yeah, Daco, this is this is uh, Scotch triples, so it's like Scotch doubles, but only one more person. Uh, so that means um, 
Blue goes to two. So Bradley's on two. Rob Molina says, people coming your way. All right. I don't know who, but that's cool. Do I owe them money? Hi, what's your name? What's your name? Zoe. Zoe. Yep. Zoe. Hi, yep. Zoe. Yeah, let's. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera. I got the boss in here. So it's Eric Turner and his his daughter. Daughter Zoe. As big as you are. Zoe can spot me to seven. <laughs> oh, she's adorable. <laughs> it's a rough life, I'm telling you. <laughs> How old your daughter? Five. Just turned right, five. She's five. She just turned five. Very cool. She's adorable. My daughter's 31. 31 years old. And, la and last week she was five. Oh, yes. So you'll be 31 next week. <laughs> she goes, what? no. What? You're going to be sick there, guys. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, she's cute. All right, let's go back to Bob. Bye, Zoe. Nice meeting you. Say bye. You, you want to say bye? Wait, wave on here. Wave to everybody on the phone. Say, say goodbye. Say bye. Bye. There she goes. Look, it's adorable. Goodness gracious. Boy, oh, boy. I got one word for you, Eric Turner. Convent. Bobby Daly Tucker, I just saw you here, buddy. Oh, yeah, let's get it. Yeah, cool. What's up, man? How are you? Good to see you. discussion about where he can make the ball and where he can leave it I like I always like to see communication I when I when I see Scotch doubles or Scotch triples I I encourage the players to communicate with one another and I I, uh, I think that's valuable for everyone involved I would never would want to discourage communication between teammates plus we as spectators we get to learn what they're thinking and and then not only what they what they're what they're attempting to do but whether or not they accomplish it after the shots completed and ironically it's not always this is going to be strange maybe for some of you to hear it's not always the best three players in the room make the best scotch triples team it's the it's the three players that shoot more alike that play off each other's strengths better it's not necessarily the better players that was a nice shot there that was a nice shot my daughter amber dawn's here she's driving back from De detroit are you guys on your way back, Amber? Uh, Andy Knive, we have playoffs tomorrow. Otherwise, he'd be here in the booth with me. That's awesome. I know. You like being in the booth. That's cool. And, and honestly, I welcome it. I welcome all the help I can get because um, it is not 
easy to talk about pool several hours in a row. Jimmy, where's uh, Jimmy? If you're here, how do you put the music back on? I can't. I, I don't remember what you said. I know. Lousy. I know. What the heck, right? One people watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. Ah, it's stuck. So what Maurice tried to do was that there was a half a pocket there to the right of the 15. He tried to roll that five ball up, hit the, hit the side of the 15 and go in the pocket, but it, it double kissed on the 15 and stuck right there. So Jeff has a uh, interesting shot here. He's got to kick the 15 two rails. He wants to hit the, the left side rail, come up, hit the head rail, make the 15, and then with that speed, Glance off the five ball and come up table, or down table rather, by the two ball. Watch this. Get past it. I mean, he hit that just about as good as he could have, and he got hooked on the two ball. Kirby Cage, you have no strange questions. All your questions are excellent. But he says this might be a strange question, but is there a certain way you should chalk the tip? I don't see many chalk it like a pencil sharpener by twisting you know personal preference uh, the tip is leather right which is usually a brown color and the chalk is usually a blue or a green right nice try nice try nice try um, what I do is I'll hold the shaft in my left hand and I'll take the cube of chalk and I'll just I'll paint it from the the edge of the tip, which is where the wall and the arch of the tip meet. I call that the corner. It's not a corner, but I call it a corner. If you look at the Q-tip two-dimensionally, you'll see a sharp corner, or you should you should see a sharp corner where the vertical wall ends ends and the arch of the the dome of the tip begins. And I go I'll go from the that corner towards the center. Meanwhile, I'm spinning the tip, spinning the cue stick in my left hand. As I'm spinning it, I'm chalking in the same motion. I'm looking at the cue tip to make sure that it all is painted light blue. There are no dark, shiny spots. And if you use a harder cue tip, some players like a hard layered tip. And uh, the more you beat on that cue ball, it can get smoothed over that leather can smash down and smooth over and they sell these little tappers they're the little files or little turtle tappers little little round files the weighted files and you just bump you just bump the, the leather q-tip and you put these little dimples in the domed part of your q-tip so the chalk adheres to it better so that's about the best way i could say it kirby Kirby's got some great questions. 
I imagine Kirby's probably like a Super 7 and is just asking me these these rudimentary questions to see if I know what I'm talking about, which is fine, too. I don't mind that. Lisa Blanchett says, great explanation. Yeah, so when I have my Q-tip, work, for, for, for those of you who are pool players and you get Q-tips done, um, I am probably one of the worst, worst customers to a uh, Q-tip repairman because I, I am so specific in what I want with respect to my Q-tip. I don't want a dime. I don't want a nice high dome. I want a very low arch uh, nickel or even a quarter, a nice low arch. And what I mean by that is from the vertical wall to the dome of your Q-tip, I don't want it to be rounded up way up high like that. And the reason is from the, the center of the dome to the edge of or the corner of your Q-tip, that's the part of your Q-tip that hits the sides of the cue ball for English. I want that to be a blunt part of my Q-tip to grab the cue ball better. Okay? So if you if you if you bump it with the file and you put those little tiny dimples in it, you chalk it, even though the Q-tip is a lower arch than a higher arch, it'll still grab the cue ball. Okay? Andy Knive says, any ideas on how not to spend $50 on a tip every time you need a tip? Well, uh, there's a, a several different Q-tip manufacturers out there. And uh, honestly, they're all pretty good. It's not even... It, Q, it, oh, here, Q-tips, in my opinion, are like tires for a car. They're all going to fit your tire. They're all going to all the tires are going to fit your wheel and you're going to get from point A to point B. Some are going to feel Here's a good word. Some are going to feel different than others. That word different can be harder, smoother, softer, uh, grippier, I don't know. Um, you you have to uh, develop a sense of feel for your Q. I call it developing a relationship with your Q stick. You have to develop a relationship with your cue stick so that when you change shoes, you know the feel is different, right? And then honestly, it doesn't matter what you get, Andy. Once you put that new tip on, just play with it. Play with your cue stick until you get a new sense of feel for that new tip, and you'll be fine. doesn't matter what it is. I have three shafts and, and tips that range from super soft too hard. Bradley's at three. Bradley's at three now. Um, I I prefer the softer tip when I play on a nine foot table. Uh, I want it's a bigger it's a bigger surface area, right? I want I want to get that cue ball around the table easier. Um, bar box eight ball. Bar box nine ball uh, with with the congestions that can occur throughout a game, I find myself hitting harder to make a shot and breaking out, moving moving other balls to potentially break out my trouble balls. So I want a harder tip so that I can send that cue ball easier. These are just my preferences. You don't have to to uh, go off of that, but that's how I that's how I play it. And I and yeah, I can go from my super hard tip to my super soft tip, and and, and it takes me maybe a game or two to get the feel for it, and then I'm, I'm back in the saddle. I'm fine. Uh, I'm not a super seven. I'm a player, but uh, I'm not a super seven. But it, it just I have a I have a, a standing relationship with my pool cue. I know what to expect from my my pool cue, and I encourage all pool players to do that. You cannot put your cue stick in your hand once a week. For, for six or seven or eight games and expect to be good at it. You have to develop a relationship with your cue stick. All right, so, Stefan supporter Robert Byrne put it this way. If memory serves, 
His, in his classic book, Burns' standard book of pool and billiards, the pros apply chalk to the tip of their cue like a woman applies. To, yeah, painted on. Yeah, very good. Jasmine Gutierrez. Hey, what's up, Jazz? Jazz, Jazz from Pockets, right? Right, Jazz? What was, the, what was the word you were supposed to use, Jazz? You were supposed to give me a word. Jazz was supposed to give me a word. Chief, the camera loves you. How do you stay so you... Aw, thank you. I don't know who that is, but thank you. I have an admirer here. I met Jazz last night at Pockets, and she's supposed to give me a magic word. Me, Holly, that's right. <laughs> oh, my wife's here. I got caught. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Holly is my wife. And Jazz, you have a secret word. You're supposed to give me a secret word here. So I'm lucky. I got my daughter driving from Detroit back home. She lives in Indiana. She's listening. And uh, P I think it was pizza. I think it was pizza. Jazz, pizza. Yes, that's right. Damn, I forgot the word pizza. Yeah, I think it is pizza. It's good enough for me. I had to get up really early for work today. Otherwise, I would have stayed out with you guys longer. But um, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't hang. I'm an old man now. All right, 50, 50 some players here watching the pool tournament. Um, we are at, we're watching the Scotch triples between Bradley Billiard Club and Chalk It Up Billiards in Mantino, Illinois. And what, what's going to happen is they're playing a race to 11. Whoever wins this one race to 11 will get me tomorrow. So Eric Turner, the new head of the uh, Kankakee Valley APA out here, is having his very first Christmas extravaganza Scotch doubles tournament benefiting Toys for Tots and... Project Headspace, which is a veterans helping uh, a veterans um, charity helping veterans with PTSD and that uh, Toys for Tots giving uh, toys to the needy kids, right? So bo both great uh, charities. So I'm glad to be a part of this. Um, Calcutta Kid TV is not making any money. Excuse me, is not uh, charging for this uh, charitable event. We are helping. Uh, them get their names out there and promote their charity. Uh, Eric Turner has four Q sticks that he's raffling off tomorrow in order to generate, as well as other, other just basket raffles and that too. But the Q sticks are very cool because there's, there's two Josses and two Peach Hours, Jerry Peach Hours. Um, the, the tickets for the Josses are $10 each. And the tickets for the peach hours are twenty dollars each. That's the right shot, Kenny. But you have to be here to buy a ticket. Um, Ken Velisca is going to hold the raffles. Each each pool hall, Bradley and Chalk It Up, Bradley Billiard Club and Chalk It Up, has one Joss and one peach hour each, four sticks. Um, so. If you want a chance at winning all four, then you're going to have to go to Bradley, buy a ticket. You have to go to Mantino at Chalk It Up and buy tickets there, too. So what I'm going to do, because I'm only going to be at one, and I'm streaming this, I want to be in all the Q raffles. So I'm going to give Ken and Eric 60 bucks so to make sure I, get, I have at least one, one raffle ticket for each of the four Qs. Yeah, uh, Joss and, and uh, Peach Hour. Jerry Peach Hour, uh, if you guys are my age or older, uh, was very prominent Q maker. He still is, but, uh, excuse me, uh, still is. But he, he was, in my opinion, known, known one of the first Q makers, in my opinion, known for the floating points. And what I mean by that is, if you see the handle or the wrap where you put your, your hand on the Q stick, 
at the top of that, the points for Jerry Peach RQs won't be attached to the wrap. They'll be up a little bit. I don't know, a little bit being maybe a quarter of an inch or half inch or so. And that the points are floating. That's why they call them floating points. They don't touch the wrap. Um, I want to say he was one of the first to do that. Could be wrong. Or, or, or he was one of the first ones that I saw with floating points. That could be two. Oh, boy. That was a nice shot. Uh, Peter is an excellent pool player. I, you know, I totally underestimated his ability. He's, he's a shooter. Please don't let me give him commentator curse here. Okay, good. All right, he's got the, where he put the cue ball, uh, Jeff's got to cut the 10 to the left, which means he's going to send the cue ball away from the 13. I imagine Jeff's going to hit a little bit of top left. Uh, drive the cue ball to the, the right side rail and spin it back over for the 13 in the same pocket. Or Jeff could hit the 13 ball here and come up table for the 8. Watch. No, he's hitting left English. Watch this. Yep, that's perfect. Get off the rail. There you go. He's kind of flat. He's kind of flat on the 8 ball. But look what Jeff's doing. He's, he's looking to see if the 8 ball goes clean past between the one and the three to the bottom left corner, and it does. So look for Brian to come up by the side pocket. He had to make the ball, buddy. And he came in a little too far anyway. Um, these are diamond tables with uh, what I would imagine is Simonis cloth. So these tables roll quick. Uh, Stephen support us. Stephen support John. Did you ever meet the great Chicago bluesman Eddie Clearwater? No, I did not. I did meet Lonnie Brooks when I was a young policeman in Chicago. I worked in the Morgan Park Police Station, which is at 111th and uh, Esmond, near uh, near Vincennes and uh, Longwood, and. Just, just east of Morgan Park High School. And uh, there was a little section of housing. Oh, look at that shot. That was cool. He played a combo like a champ. Uh, there's a little section of housing. Uh, there's a little section of housing off of uh, Vincennes at 107th, uh, just over I-57, or alongside it, I guess. And uh, my partner and I would call it Little Mississippi because the streets were real narrow and you could only get one car down and the houses were so close together and and built in a fashion that reminded me of what Mississippi houses would look like, I guess. And in the middle of this little triangle full of houses, maybe, maybe, maybe 30, 40 houses total in this section, is a gigantic tour bus with the name Lonnie Brooks on the side. I happened to know was a blues player and I said uh, please tell me that, uh, Lonnie Brooks knows his tour van is parked over here and it was a guy raking leaves and he goes uh, officer I'm Lonnie Brooks he goes come by and see me at the house at uh, uh, buddy guy's place I'll be there so what do I do me my wife my partner his girlfriend his wife at the time um, we get a group of people we go to uh, see Buddy Guy and uh, Lonnie Brooks at the time was at 8th and State 3 to 2 it's, it's a game folks But that's it, Steve. I, uh, Stefan, I, I didn't uh, meet anybody else. That that was, I mean, as far as musicians go, I think that's it. You're good. You're good.
Oh, the Chief. No, I did not. I did not know that. Legends. Yeah, just watch that. Thank you. Yeah, Scotch triples is pretty much the same as Scotch doubles, but the three guys have to stay in order the entire match. Not, not game. The entire match. They will follow each other. So in other words, if the order is um, Peter, Brian, Jeff, it has to stay that order the entire night. If they happen to shoot out of order and the other team catches them, that's ball in hand automatically. Nashkoff, owner of Chalk It Up Billiards at the table now. Doesn't have much of a shot here. I imagine him playing safe. He has a 13 ball in the side pocket. And then the 11 ball. Come up. What he does not have is a 12 and a 9. So I think everything else goes besides that. So look for Rick to make the 13 and leave an angle on the 11 so that his, his teammate can run into the 1-9 and open up the two trouble balls. This is what I mean by uh, bar box pool being uh, Where you would need to hit 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 the cue ball a little more firmly more often, so I want a, a nice more more dense cue tip, so that when I put some steam on the cue ball, it doesn't misshape as quickly as if it were a softer tip. I think that makes sense. I hope. Buddy Guy's Legend, that's the name of it, thank you. Reese Cutsy, how are you? We're, we're going okay, Reese. We are, we are at uh, Bradley Berry Club in, in Bradley, Illinois. Playing some scotch doubles here, and uh, oh, Maurice missed that one. Come on, Reese. You know, for a small play, it gets it gets filled quickly. Um, if you want to get me an IPA, I appreciate it. Uh, she knows which one it was. Cat, uh, 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 cat, yeah. Hi, Deborah. How are you? Are you in Mantino now? Are you at the are you at Chalk It Up now or are you watching from home? We should have the stream here. Hey Bobby, you wanna put 
You want to put me on the TV or no? Okay, okay, okay. Well, he's got he got some work to do there. He's got a. Uh, Debra just left. Uh, chalk it up. Now at home. Okay, Debra. All right. It's like ten minutes down the road, but uh, but my buddy Rob is working tonight, so I never had a partner. Oh. The uh, Scotch doubles is tomorrow. This is a Scotch triples. These are the owners of each of the. These are the owners of each of the pool halls. Rick from Chalk It Up and Peter from Bradley Billiard Club. And two of their picks, their, their regulars, playing a race to 11. Whoever wins gets to have me stream at their place tomorrow. 4-2. Four, 4-2. Four two. Four two. We're already at 4-2. It's a race to 11. Jeremy Maynard, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. Thank you. That's what she gave me. Thank you. I remember Black Top. Thank you. Well, how do you guys feel about IPAs? Let's talk about beer for a second while they rack. I think they're delicious. And the more bitter, the better. Oh, boy, is that good. Robbie Contreras, the state master from Iowa, Iowa state master. Hey, Robbie, I will be at the ACS Midwest 8-Ball cha uh, Championships, uh, Jimmy and I, in January at the River Center in Davenport. So I hope to see you there, buddy. Hi, Laura. How are you? Laura, Laura Leeper Hargens. What's up, girl? That's my friend. She's actually a pretty good pool player. Cool, cool, cool. All right, Robbie. Yeah, stop by and say hi. Uh, Reese, I was there last night with my old man. We had to play on a nine foot. Oh, okay. Oh, that's okay. I play. I play probably. If I'm going to be realistic, four, four hours a week on a nine foot table. I try to play two straight pool matches a week on a nine foot on a nine foot table. So that gives me my practice, right? I'm um, 12 and three. I'm a 105 handicap. So uh, it, it it can be a boring it can be a boring game if you're not playing well. It can be humbling beyond all things, right? But uh, when you're shooting good and you're getting that that string together, man. It's a cool game. Uh, and honestly, even though I have a, a winning record, my high run this session is only like 24 balls. I'm not, like, killing it. I can't seem to get into that third, that third rack. I can clear one. I can get into the second one, and, and usually I get out of the line or whatever, and I'm stuck. But I, I can't seem to get into that third. My goal this year, not, not 2024, my goal is to get into the third rack of straight pull. Once once I get into my third rack, I think I think I'll have a better idea of how the string runs together. But right now, guys, if you haven't started playing straight pull uh, and you want to get better at eight ball and nine ball, yes, yes, sounds so easy, right? Make any ball in any pocket. But there you go. That's the rules. Make any ball in any pocket. You get one point per ball. And I got to go to 105. No, it's it's not easy. You you would think it would be. It's it's. And then and then you're shooting that 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 low percentile shot. Like if I miss it, where am I going to leave the cue ball? I don't want to leave 
my opponent with a with the ability to string a run together against me. So yeah, there's some strategy to it, and it's it's not easy. I, I was I was horrible. My, this is my third session. My first two sessions, I was horrible. Like, like I didn't I didn't know what the hell to do. Uh, I still don't really, <laughs> but I'm getting I'm getting better at understanding the game. But I, I again with my high run of being 24 balls, I have a long way to go. Uh, nine foot's a super hard. What? Yeah, for now, sure, but but keep playing. You'll, you'll be fine, Reese. You'll be fine. Everyone gets embarrassed at some point in the game. It's how we get better. Yeah, 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 for sure. Deborah Kov and Daryl and Debbie say hi from Mantino. Good luck all. All right, Daryl and Debbie. That's what Jeff's doing. He's just talking out loud so his teammates can hear him to share the run that he, he wants to see happen. And that's perfectly fine, so I, I like that. I'm all for communication. Especially this is a charitable thing, right? They're not they're not playing for money. If it was a money thing, no, nah, that's inappropriate. But this is a uh, charitable thing, right? The winner of this gets no money. The winner of this Scotch Triples decides where I, Calcutta Kid TV, will be streaming tomorrow. Just happen to be having it here right now. Uh for the deciding match, right? Rick Nash sweep the Lake Envy. <laughs> Aiden Morris looks like a good yeah. Aiden, weren't you weren't we playing on the nine foot at uh, Chalk It Up last week? Was that was that you and me and your buddy Caden? Is that right? Is this the right Aiden or no? You guys were kind. If, if so, you guys were kind enough to let me play a couple games with you. That was pretty cool. Reese, that is a that is a four hour discussion, man. Cue ball control. Uh, if I could just give someone some uh, few words of advice and they could just take that and be great at cue ball control, uh, my job as a teacher would, uh, as, as a coach, would be so much easier. Um, I'll just say this: it's it's Reese. It's all about your relationship with your cue ball. What can you do? With your cue stick, what can't you do with your your relationship with your cue stick, not your cue ball? Oh, Ken. Chris, yeah. we, we I uh, spent some time with Chris here at, at Bradley before. He catches on quickly. He likes the way I teach. So, sure. I charge a whole ten dollars an hour now. The hard part is me finding free time. Excuse me, Reese. LOL, because it's it was ten ball last week, and I have to really. Yeah. You know what, Reese? Next time we meet, uh, remind me about this discussion, okay? And you and I will spend an hour together, okay? You'll have a. You'll have a better idea, Reese, of what to practice when you're practicing. And I'll, I'll say it so everyone's, so for everyone's benefit. It's not that you practice, it's what you practice. You practice 10 hours a week practicing the wrong thing, you're not helping yourself. You practice one hour a week practicing the right thing, you're improving. So at least I'll get you practicing the right thing so that when I'm away from you, you're at least getting, you, you know, you get, you're getting better and you know why you're getting better. That's it. Back to the game here. Two ball in the side pocket. That was nice because he, he rolled that cue ball perfectly. Nice slow bump it. There you go. Off the rail. Nice, nice, nice. When I practice, I usually just chuck the balls on the table. Should, yeah. Um, you should be practicing things you're not good at. If you practice things you're good at, the things you're not good at will never get better. Scores five to two here at Bradley Billiard Club. Bradley is over, chalk it up at the moment. It's, it's a race to 11.
at almost 50 people watching. So thank you very much for tuning in. I'm John Enigas, your host of Calcutta Kid TV. We're live at Chalk It Up Billiards for the Scotch Triples. Uh, it's it's the owners of, of Chalk It Up Peter, Chalk It Up Billiards, and two players, um, Jeff Long and Brian Kara. Peter Korsgaard, Jeff Long, Brian Kara, and the owner of Chocolate Pillage, Rich, Rich Na Rick Nashkoff, Ken Velisca, and Maurice Runnels. That's Ike's brother. They're going to play a race to 11. Tomorrow will be Eric Turner's APA uh, Scotch Doubles Extravaganza, fundraiser for Toys for Tots and Project Headspace, a uh, veteran's charity the winner of this will determine where I stream tomorrow it's kind of cool uh, Reese you would have to talk come up come up here and talk to uh, Bobby or Blaine and uh, they will point you in the right direction how to join a league here Bobby do you know when the league start here do you know when league start here She doesn't know when the leagues start, but uh, if you come up here and talk to the, she, she can point you in the right direction. I'm, I don't know who the league operator is here. Uh, I know Brian Kara. I mean, I mean uh, Eric Turner is a uh, APA league operator. Uh, Steve Gillespie is the uh, US APL league operator out here. And I believe there's an ACS league op operator out here as well. I don't know who that is. All depends on what kind of games you want to play. Yeah, Lisa, you could help him out. Um, Reese, uh, look at Lisa's comment there. Uh, she can point to right there. She's she's actually in a couple of leagues, uh, Lisa Blanchett. So look to uh, look to Lisa for more advice. I'm not that familiar with the leagues out here. JT Weaver, Randy Hudson is ACS operator at Chalk. Oh, there you go. Thank you, JT. Randy Hudson, Phil Uthy is an ACS operator on Sundays. Randy also runs a cash league on Monday and th Thursday out of Bradley. Jimmy Berry, where do you shoot straight pool leagues? I'm at Pockets uh, in Crestwood, Illinois. It's uh, 13430 South Cicero. Crestwood is a uh, near suburb of Chicago, near southwest suburb. Ed Latimer is our league operator. Our um, ours is handicapped. Our straight pool is handicapped. I'm a 105. There are some players who are 35s, which means they only have to make 35 balls. I have to make 105. There's also some guys that are in the 150s, much better than me, right? Um, the straight pool league at Red Shoes at 119th and Pulaski is not handicapped. Every player goes to 125. Much more difficult. Uh, Jimmy, uh, Ed Latimer... Ed Latimer runs our straight pool league, and John Lavin runs the straight pool league at Red Shoes.
You're welcome, Jimmy. Some work on the table here. He's got stripes. Brian, uh, this is uh, Jeff. No, this is uh, Rick. Rick. He's going to cut the 14 ball up table. Or play safety. Very nice. Yes, Lisa, that's right. That's what I remember, too. He's got an Australian accent. Oh, so that's right. It's not, you're right. It's South African. <laughs> it is. It 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 does though. It's, it sounds similar, but you're right. It's, it, you're right. You said South African. You're right about that. Yeah, it does. It does, Lisa. You're right about that. But it's probably to him nowhere near right. But but to us, who aren't familiar with either, it, it's not even even close. Um, I do have a book, Reese. Uh, I'd like you to read. It's called The Power of One. The Power of One is about a little boy called PK, growing up in South Africa. Uh, in the early part of the 1900s. And it was uh, an excellent book. It's a feel-good book. It's not an action book. It's a life lesson feel-good book. Give it a try. The Power of One. I forget the uh, author's name. It's been a while since I read it. I'm going back 20-some years. Give me a second. It is a novel by Yep, Bryce Courtney. That's right. Bryce Courtney. Uh, here, I'll, I'll just put it in the comments. The Power of One by Oops. Courtney. Give it a read. As with any book. Nice shot. As with any book, if it doesn't have you by the first chapter, by the end of the first chapter, put it down. But I think you'll like it. I enjoyed it. Because it's set in South Africa, you may uh, be familiar with some of the locations there. All right. Authoring a book? No, I haven't. What would I write about? My exploits as a Chicago police detective, maybe? Who would read that, right? Oh boy, look at this room. Let me show you this room. All these people watching. As Jeff goes to shoot that shot, watch this. Look at all these people watching. Jeff called the side pocket. Uh, just be careful that this. You 
just going to try to run into the six. I don't think he, well. That's a 6-13 there in the center of the table. He's making the one now up table. He's got the six on the, on the right-hand side. Yeah, it was a good breakout, but he had to put some some spin on the cue ball, and that threw the that threw the one ball away. The advanced players know what I'm talking about. When you put, whenever you hit left or right of the y-axis, the vertical line on the cue ball. You're putting side spin on the cue ball. Well, that side spin has an effect, sometimes negatively, on your object ball. So the mid-level players, when, I, when I'm teaching someone and, and a mid-level player says to me, Chief, every time I use English, I miss. I'm like, come here, come here, you're this close. You're this close. You almost got it. You're understanding that the spin you're putting on the cue ball is causing you to miss. When you get better at it, that spin could help you make shots that would be otherwise seemingly impossible. Spin and do throw. Had a boy. <laughs> I guess Kirby says, like, I can write a book about Q-tips? Oh, I put, I put everybody to sleep. <laughs> Forget counting sheep. Just read Chief's book about Q-tips. <laughs> Teams have a little sidebar over here about what, what to do, what not to do. So, ooh, cue ball squirt. You know about that too, huh? So, uh, I will say this, Lisa. If you know about squirt and throw, you're uh, you're on your way to becoming a a, uh, a strong advanced player. Uh, there's actually four four parts of physics that enter into a cue shot when you hit left or right of the y-axis. Number one is deflection. Your cue stick actually deflects; it bends because the ball is round and it has mass six ounces and you, you're hitting to the left or right of the y-axis, that Q-tip that you put all that chalk on will hit the cue ball and will grab it just for a moment and your cue stick will actually bend. That's called deflection. As the cue stick de bends, it'll, it'll, it'll push back a rebound, pushing the cue ball off that, off that center line, which is called squirt. That's what Lisa's talking about. The cue ball on its way to the object ball will actually curve or swerve or masse. All those words are correct. And when that spinning ball hits your object ball, contacts your object ball, that spin will throw your object ball. So if you think this game is difficult, try hitting curve balls at your object ball. Okay? If you don't, if you don't think this game is difficult, hit curveballs on your way to the object. This game is incredibly difficult. If you want to minimize your chance of missing a shot, stay on that y-axis. Top, center, bottom, doesn't matter. But stay on the y-axis, and you'll find that you'll make shots more often. You may not get the leave you want, but your shot making will go up. So, so put yourself in that position in a game where you must make the shot. Forget, forget about the English you need to drive to the next spot or whatever. But you, this is a must-make shot. I'm staying, me, I'm staying on that Y-axis. Absolutely. Um, Chief, if you had to pick uh, five pool halls in the area, what would they be the top five? Oh, top five. You know, years ago we had many more pool halls. Now, now that, that answer's a lot easier. But uh, years ago when I was your age, Andy, um, 
Uh, Maurice, he's having a bad day. Um, there were a lot more pool halls to choose from. Reese, I know so much pool knowledge and terminology, but don't know how to put it into action. That goes back to your relationship with your cue stick, okay? Don't be, don't be a stranger. If, if, you, if you only dated your girlfriend once a month, she wouldn't be your girlfriend very long, right? It's about the amount of time and energy you have to put into that relationship to develop it, right? Same thing goes with your cue stick. Develop a relationship with your cue stick. Understand your cue stick, how it behaves. Spend time with it. Lisa, yes, my deflection on my cue, Muchi was really, yeah, Muchi's, a Muchi can second as a uh, fishing rod. They're, they're ridiculous with the amount of whip they have, but some players love it. I don't, some players do. Yeah, you, you went from night to day, uh, Lisa, from going to, hey, from, from a uh, Muchi to a carbon fiber, you went night, night and day. Can you run the table just top and, absolutely. Reese, absolutely. 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 I'm, I'm, I'll tell you this. I'm a seven and eight ball and an eight and nine ball. And it doesn't matter which game, eight ball or nine ball. Four, on average, four out of every five shots I shoot are on the Y axis. Every once in a while I get a little bit out of line and I got to do something funky with the cue ball. Spin it like crazy to get 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 back, try to get back in a position. Then once I do, right back on the Y axis. Okay, stay there. It is, it is, Lisa. Yes, my cue is kind of bad. I need to get a proper one. Okay, Muchis have a ton of. They do. They are ridiculous. You're right about that. My buddy Dylan. What's up, Dylan? Yeah, your brother? Yeah, that's my brother, Derek. Hey, Derek, how are you? Chief, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. That's where I learned. Oh, everything I, everything he's I've good, huh? No, nice. I say that. Nice. That was good. I hung out with Jimmy a lot. Played oh, a lot cool, of cool, cool. Tournaments in the cool, cool. Good, good, to know, good to know you. Yeah. Good to know you. I, I listen to you all the time. Thank you. You do good. Thank you. Really good Thank work. you. I didn't know how long you were staying, so I was like, I better bring you over here. Yeah. You guys want to jump on together? Why don't you Why don't you pull that chair over and you guys can stream uh, one game together? Well, uh, uh, hold on. You guys want to stream a game together? I don't think I'm cool with that. Dylan and Derek. That's right. Lisa Blanchett says hi. So as soon as this game's over, I'm going to change the score. I'm going to move over so Dylan and Derek can, can stream one game together. This is the right ball. Make the one up. Uh, you want to come forward because you want to hit top right and come around two rails. Oh, but get in there. You don't want to hit draw here. You want to go. Uh, I would have. I would have liked to be steeper here. He's gonna hit draw. He's hitting low. Yeah. Okay. Peter's got a straight in shot here for the win. And this will bring uh, Bradley up to 6-2. Uh, yeah, this way. No. I was wrong. I I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. All right, I'm going to get up, and uh, Dylan and Derek are going to take over. All right, so be kind to them. All right.
I'm going to watch it later. I want to see how good you guys are. Oh, no pressure, right? <laughs> this thing's going. Sweet. Sounds good. All right, chalk it up up here at the table. It looks like. How's things Who's going, guys? You guys, uh, how many people we got out here? You got a number going on out here? Uh, I think if you click on destinations, that'll tell you where they're at. Oh, yeah, that's all all right. right. Thanks, Lisa. But uh, I'd probably have to put my money on Derek too as well. <laughs> Been a while since he shot those, so I uh, got that going for me. Looks like chalk it up. Maurice is up here at the table. I think he's looking at solids. I think that's what he is. Might be trying to move the one ball if he can. Yeah, maybe not. It's a good shot on the two. Can't tell what th that uh, group of balls over there. It looks, looks like, like the seven, fourteen, and three. Yeah, yeah. kind of tied up there. <clears throat> Not a whole lot to work with. Trying to see if people comment. Um, triple scotch. <laughs> have either of us played triple scotch? Nope. I have played um, just a very little. Um, Nothing, nothing too big. Um, I like Scotch doubles. I think Scotch doubles is fun. Um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think um, it it, all, it levels out the playing field with the really good players and the you know the higher tiered players. You know the higher tiered players are going to try and make really good shots and um, try to leave their partner or their teammates perfect, and that's when they're going to end up messing up as well. Mm -hmm. So. It, it puts a little bit of pressure on the better players. It does. You know, and I've I've been in a scotch doubles with a you know higher tier player before. It definitely helps me out a lot, being yeah. you know a little bit lower. Yep. You know, learn a lot. You know, you learn from each other. You learn sure. a lot of things. <clears throat> you don't see scotch triples too much, I don't think. Not very often, no. <clears throat> Seem a little stumped here. Looks like he might be thinking about the one. Yeah, it might be a good ball to get out. You just don't want to get it. You don't want to move it too far because you need that ball for your seven and your three. Right. You know. Um, I think that's what the eight. The eight balls down here next. You know, next yep. to the nine. Yeah. It did. It's not, you know, maybe maybe getting that one out, but leaving it, you know, by that side pocket, makes it um, a little bit of a, a good ball to break out possibly after. Um, so, <laughs> Lisa, green piece of felt. Oh yeah, we were for breaking and jump jump shots. Hey, Kaylee. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, if you're watching, and uh, leave a comment. You know, uh, let us know you're there. Uh, ask questions away. You know, do whatever Absolutely. you want. Absolutely. Try to stump us, because when I'm stumped, I'll just look over at Dylan. Then uh, let him let him work it out. I'm stumped. I look at you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, and, uh, you know, if... If you are watching, I'm sure then you already know the deal with Calcutta Kid TV, but it's uh, a great, great streaming service. You know they, you know they travel around. They um, they um, do a lot of tournaments, a lot of pool. You know they're 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 good for the pool community. They absolutely you know, are. Absolutely. They they make it better by showing it off. Um, 
Chief does great. I, uh, the first night I met him was tonight, um, but he he does great. Every time I listen to streams, he has so much cool knowledge, you know, and yeah, he, um, knows. he knows a lot of people. That helps too. Um, so it's a lot of fun. But if you um, if you don't follow him or subscribe to him or send him stars or whatever you do, um, do it. It's worth it. Um, so. That Joe Gerard said hi. Hey fellas. Yeah, what's up, Joe? <laughs> Needs it to slow down. Yeah, he got enough there. I mean, it's not ideal, but you can make that work. Yeah. Depends on you. He might play safe, be a little conservative here, knowing yeah. that they have some balls they have to work out. Yeah, 14 is it is trapped. Over yeah, there. you know he's got. He's got options. He can either, he can even stop it just right behind that 11 if he wanted. Yeah. Just like that. Yep. That's a good shot. Yeah. You know, if he can nestle in, it'd be good if he could nestle in on that three ball. I don't think it solves anything. He's going to cross the seven. A little bit of inside English here. You want to throw it towards that pocket. Um, it's a good ball to get out of the way. Still locks up the 14. Yeah. Problem is they're moving. They're moving their balls away, <laughs> away yeah. from that that problem spot. So, <clears throat> Rich, how you doing? Um, looks pretty full in here tonight. Uh, there might. There might be a table. I haven't I haven't seen the other side of the, the pool hall yet. I did look and it, it was full. Is it full? Yep, it was pretty full. That was a good shot by Brian. He was pretty controlled. You know, he didn't he didn't let it loose and everything fly around. Um, it seemed like it was pretty calculated, you know, on where he was moving things. Um. <laughs> Jeff got a little excited there. He was trying to jump the gun there. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it to Jeff to cheat a little bit. <laughs> what do you do here, Dylan? Right stripes. I'm stripes. No, it's a tough shot with that 11. Yeah. I don't know. I personally, I might even try to bank that 11 back cross side. I'll try and stop it right there so you can take the 15. That's what he did. He drew it back. If it stops there, it's really good. No, it bounced out. Um. <clears throat> you know, if you try to take that 11 in the side there, on the left side, uh, you force it to you know, go back three rails, round table. Right. Yeah, this is a big game for Chalk It Up. Um, they need to maybe get this one, get some momentum here, and... Um, Get the score back. What is it? Six to six two right six now. Six to two. Yep. Six yeah. two. Bradley. Yeah. Uh, Rich, I agree. Um, we're loving the stream as well. Um, yeah, it's like I said, it's a great, great thing to have in the pool community. It is. And like you said earlier, Chief, he does a uh, he does a great job with it. Absolutely. Yeah. That was a good shot. Nice shot by Maurice there. He's got options now. Uh-oh. <laughs> Russ Belcher walked in. I say it's been a little bit since you've seen these guys. Yeah, it's been a long time since <laughs> I've seen them. So. So yeah, if any questions, anything you want to say, make sure you're uh, putting some comments up there. We got this, I uh, think we'll be here for this game and we're gonna let Chief back to do what he does best, you know, um, after this game. That's what uh, that's what you guys are on here to, to listen to. Right. We're uh, kind of the am amateurs here. <laughs> but uh, it, is, it is nice to do something with you though. I love it. Yeah. Don't look at me <laughs> like that. <laughs> I have to shoot some pool, but I'm afraid you beat me every time now. I'm shooting enough. Yeah. 
still, uh, still a little rough. Working yeah. it, I'm working it out. Yep. Yep. Pool hall is nice here. Um, if you guys haven't been to Bradley Billiards, got some diamond pool tables. Um, definitely, um, definitely different than the valleys. It is. Um, different. Anybody who's shot pool on both know. Um, they got a good pool room here, and they're the team they're playing. Chalk it up. That's a good. It's a good pool room too. Um, I think it's good. If, you know, when you have pool halls, they should be working together. Absolutely. You know, to bring business to both. So, um, yeah. and I think that's kind of the case here is kind of revitalize pool a little bit. Oh, you know, absolutely. In the area. And we got you know, APA USAPO out of both pool halls. You know. And End of the session, come together for playoffs. Like the USA, they got playoffs going right now over there. Uh, well, that's yeah. all we want for the community, I think. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> come on, Peter, Rich says. <laughs> Does playing pool come with ring rust if you don't play for a while, or is it like a bike? Can you jump right back on. That's a good question for you. <laughs> I'll let you take that one. <laughs> you know, it, people might have different opinions on this. I, I think it is similar to like riding a bike. I think the the longer you you don't shoot, you still have the knowledge. I, I think you just have to focus and slow down on everything a little more, which is probably better for your game anyway. Um, you know, if, if you're slowing down and you're and you're really conscientious of of your shot, I think I think that's that's how it's supposed to be anyway. And, and um, I think it just turns into kind of the muscle memory, get back into the into the the swing of things. You know, getting used to the the balls rolling into the pockets and the confidence is big. You know, if, if you shoot pool, you, everybody knows your mind is big. That your is. confidence in your mind is big on it. So, but um, you don't have to if you want. But if you want to say, that's fine. Give me a favor. Seven. Seven. Yep. Bradley just turned it over to seven two. A race to eleven here. Yeah. And Bradley to break. Bradley's breaking. Yeah, Bradley and Chalk It Up. Um, we'll do one more game. Then we'll let Chief back do his thing. That works for one me. One more game and you got it back. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Bradley and Chalk It Up are the two pool halls in this area. It, it, was, um, it was Chalk It Up for quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. Then Bradley got kind of got going, and um, it's a, another great pool hall, you know. No, definitely no um, long shots, bedrocks. It's just you know Joliet. Um, I've been there a lot. I guess I, I guess I was just talking about this immediate area, um, but but yeah, those are great pool halls as well um, that that do good. Um, have a lot of great players in there, really strong players. Um, I don't think I've ever been to Bedrocks. Have you been up there? Mm -mm. No. Long shots, I've been there, I think, once, maybe twice. Long shots, yeah. Yeah. I do hear a lot of good things about it, though. You yeah. Know, great shooters. Yep. <clears throat> Prefer Bradley or Chalk It Up? I don't think I have a preference. I'll let you let you answer it, but um, no. no, I don't have a preference either. I mean, the only the only thing I would say is, you know, the difference between the diamonds and the valley pool tables, uh, the corner pockets. Definitely, the valleys are a little bit wider. It's easier for me to make balls that way. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, even on a diamond table, you know, you, you got to zone your focus in a little bit. Sure. Uh, I mean, I don't. Either way. I like them both. Yeah. Like we said earlier, it's about the pool community. 
Have you been to Pocket? I think we both Pockets. have been to Pockets. Yes. Yeah. I've, you rode with me for a tournament up there one time. Yep. Yep. Pockets is, is a nice place. It is. I was just up there for that three man too. Oh, that three was a three man tournament. Yep. That was a fun tournament. Uh, really nice place. Love the upstairs. I've never been up there until you know, a few weekends ago. Yeah. That was. Long shots used to do a um, three man tournament. It wasn't scotch. It was um, it was like a round robin style. Oh really? Yeah, where you played everybody. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was round robin style. So you played the whole game. It was you versus one other player. Um, okay. um, I think Sergeant. Yep, Sergeant ran that for a while. I think I played in it two or three times. Um, they will be doing that for their information coming soon. Oh, about another three man, maybe at long shots. Is that what he's talking about? Maybe? I, I, th- I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Chalk It Up is very nice. Great owner. Yeah, great owners, great owners. Um, Yeah, Rick. Yeah, played out of long shots for years. He's focusing on the stream more than the game. What's going on here? The stream or are you playing pool here, Rick? Come on now. (laughs) Played a tournament one time. I was in um, Peoria. And there was a streamer there. It might have been um, uh, that. This is it is important on who it was, but um, <laughs> Rick, <laughs> I was I wasn't playing. It was an APA tournament, so and I was sitting in front of the streamer, and I was on my phone watching the stream. And I was sitting right next to the table. I could see the game better if I watched it at the table, but instead I was watching it through my TV my screen on my phone. <laughs> And the guy streaming saw what I was doing and, like, turned the camera down on me while I was watching it through my phone. <laughs> That's great. So I didn't know it was happening until I saw the camera move down. It was it was pretty funny. You're sitting there. You're like, look, I'm on TV. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Q-Bar. Yep. Been up there. Uh, Friday night tournaments up there are, um, are good. Haven't been up there in a while. There's a lot of really good pool rooms if you, you know, if you want to get up to the Chicago area, um, you could go, you could you could play pool at a bunch of spots for a for a while, and you could run into a lot of really really strong players everywhere you go. So, we get back to this game. Looks like. Uh, Bradley's got a little control Bradley. here. Just to get some some top English to roll down, you want to keep a good angle on this nine. Mm-hmm. You just don't want to land flat on it. You definitely want to. You don't want to be on the other side. I guess then you could shoot the fifteen if you had to. But um, yeah, he's pointing just about to the perfect spot if you can. Because then just you kind of stun over for the fifteen. Yeah. Hi, boys. Uh Uh-oh, Mom found us. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, he missed it. Yeah, see, he he tried to control that cue ball so much, and the the 14 ball ended up coming off the rail because of it. Spun away from it a little. I think he got the the position he wanted. He's got to make the ball first. Yep, yep. Pretty open on this end of the table. We'll for chalk it up here, hopefully. Uh, yeah. See if they can pull something out here. Sure. Yeah, they need this. They need this. Um, get some momentum going for them. I like leaving that seven ball for last for the eight ball. Yep. Um, obviously, they're all good enough. If you didn't have another shot, you could take it and and still get on the eight ball. It's um, absolutely pretty open. But shoot nice and easy. Look like a 
Looks like they're trying to take control here. Yep. Jimmy Barry. Hey, the Millers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Roll up a little for the one next or get way up there. He came all the way around for the seven. That's interesting. Have to, have to win the next five to six games consecutively. Yeah, they'd... Uh, they definitely need to try and slow things down a little bit. <laughs> Looks like Kyle's getting in on some action. Leave it to Kyle, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Kyle always loves a little action. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he has an angle in this, so he's going to have to roll down and bounce back up. Yep. Yeah. A good shot. Now, you, like you said, you know, use that seven if you got to. No, so get back down there for it. Yeah. Yep. I kind of like the three in the side if you can. Maybe roll forward for the four, but he might have angle. He might have an angle to pop back out with a little bit of like top right. Yeah, that's still good. Nice shot. Yeah. He kind of drew that, kind of poked at that one, drew, yeah. drawing it back. He didn't want to get straight in for sure. Not saying anything. Nice smooth stroke, right back down table. Yeah, it is. This is uh, be quite a comeback for them. I think they have kind of dug themselves into a hole, but um, definitely all these players are good enough oh, to uh, to get to to win four or five games together. You know, all it takes is a little bit of a momentum swing, and uh, they're right back in it. You know, and they've just started it. They're they're there, so yep. um, they get this one and they go right back at it. So double click, double click in that window. Go ahead. Make that full screen. <laughs> Seven, three. So double click there. Three. Click here. Minimize. Getting some lessons here. He's learning. <laughs> push it up. Push? Yep, push it up. Yep, and then. Go ahead. Close it out. Sorry. Close it out. Uh, okay. Seven, three, right? Yep. All right. Do one more if you want. Nah, we'll let you have it back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, we're going to let, let him take oh, it back. Yeah. I appreciate you guys letting us do it. Appreciate Chief letting us get on there. And, Absolutely. Uh, you guys are yeah. naturals with this. <laughs> you guys want a job? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Got too many kids at home to, to do it. So, all Let's right. Say, Lisa, leave my guy Kyle alone, Kyle. Dylan can <laughs> hang out, but I'm, yeah, I'm good. But no, I'm okay. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Thank you. Shut down number two. Thank you. Yeah, when, uh, when Jimmy had I always help out. Oh, you know what you're doing. No, I, he, he tried to, to show me how to do it. I, I got lost. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Squeeze through and I got it. Oh. I'm going to over a little bit later. I'm going to hang out with him. Yeah, of course. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was cool. The, the the two brothers had the uh, had a moment there to uh, stream together, right? I thought that was pretty special. I thought it was special. All right, where are we at here? Seven to three. Keep it going. Chalk it up. Hats off to them. Gee, yeah, Andy, Lisa, you're right. Kyle Gray. Okay, Kyle Gray wants it. Jimmy Berry. Hey, the Millers. Okay. Q bar. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So, uh, we are here in rack number 11. 
in a race tool. It's already seven to three. Chalk, Br- Bradley Billiard, Chalk it up needs to do something because Bradley is at, they need four games. They need four games to win this. Um, just so you guys don't, normally uh, they put my stream up on a TV. Uh, my software is, just shows me what I'm, I'm showing here. Uh, when, when they put my stream up on a TV, I'm able to see what you guys see. I just see my software. I don't see what you guys see on the, on the stream, if that makes any sense. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm using my phone to watch the stream so I can see what you guys see. If we have any technical issues... All right. I think it's okay so far. What do you guys think? The colors look good. The uh, It's not stuttering. Um, I'm tapped into their data um, ports here, so I shouldn't have any issue with the uh, speeds. I'll, I'll do a speed check anyway just to make sure. Jimmy Berry says all good on his end. All right. That's cool to hear. I'll turn that up there a little bit. Rich Wheeler. What's up, Rich? Yeah, everything's good here. Everything's good there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to take just about... 60 seconds. This game's going to continue in the background, so uh, I'll catch you up to date in a second. Um, what I would like you guys to do is to watch a little bit about QConnect. It's an app that Jimmy's been creating, working with the developers in the background. Since Jimmy doesn't do the streaming, he, he's involved in other things with our business. So um, let me show you what he's doing, and uh, I think you'll like it. Be back in a moment. back um, I didn't realize that Bradley was gonna run that out so quickly so it's eight to three now wow. what do you think yeah right we're excited about it yeah. so Jimmy if you're here I shared it with Derek um, Derek says he knows you what's your last name Miller. Derek Miller says he knows you oh I've seen your name on the stream before the comments yeah yeah, yeah. 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 
Thanks, Kirby. Kirby says we're all good over there. Uh, Rich Wheeler says we're good there. Jimmy says good. Uh, Andy Kanai, beyond thrilled for this to be coming out, definitely for a pool hall junkie. Yeah, the app will be out. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy's hoping for February. I don't know uh, what will be the reason we don't make February deadline. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy says we're, we're still on target to meet our, our February deadline. It's a deadline that we made. So uh, that's, that's, that's what Jimmy's... Uh, those of you who don't, you don't see Jimmy on the, on the stream all the time, he's still very, very much involved with Calcutta, probably more so than I am. I just do the streaming. I do uh, sponsorship acquisition, and I handle some of the merch. Jimmy does all the technical stuff and the, 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 the app development. He's, he's very much involved in the business end of it. So um, he reads these comments. If you want to say something to Jimmy... Go ahead and post a comment. He reads them all, so trust me, he does. You got one job. Go ahead. Um, we, we had a good uh, meeting. To, Jimmy and I had a good meeting today. Um, so I, I, the, more, the more I talk with Jimmy, the, the more I get excited about where Calcutta Kid TV is going in the future. So uh, I, I'm not at liberty to discuss uh, everything we're doing. So just know that it's 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 gonna be exciting and honestly if it makes pool more popular in our area how could it be bad right how could it be bad all right uh, if you want to be part of the early release of the app leave a comment in the stream and include your email address I think that's all we need is your name and your email address and uh, Jimmy can take take that information and get you to the next step when the app comes out um, You, you'll be you'll be a, a part of the uh, the early release. I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm reading comments as I'm talking, which is kind of hard to do. Um, how did I get involved with streaming? So, okay, Kirby doesn't know. I'll, I'll let I'll let you guys know. This is for everyone's benefit. Um, I retired from the Chicago Police Department in May of uh, 22. So, a year and a half ago, uh, I did almost 30 years with Chicago Police. I did the last 22 years as a detective. And, nice, oh, he overcut that ball. Ken, that was a great try. Um, so, in, in, my, in my many years of, hey, Jeff, in my many years of, coaching high school billiards and teaching pool at Pockets. Um, the owners at Pockets have treated me very well with respect to table time, if you know what I'm saying, okay? So when I retired, I wanted to do something nice for them in return. Of all the times they've taken care of, the 20-some years they've taken care of me, um, I had two of my friends they wanted to play for money and I said you know what I see these guys online they're doing this this guy Calcutta kid they're doing this these uh, these streams online I want to do that for you for you pockets and I got literally this is how rudimentary it was a tripod and my iPhone and I live streamed to Facebook and I talked into my phone as my audio very, very rudimentary. Uh, but it got the trick done. I uh, got the job done. And uh, about two weeks later, I'm at Pockets shooting uh, one pocket with this old man that I play pool with. And a uh, guy walks up to me and says, Hey, I'm Jimmy Hannis. I'm the Calcutta Kid. And I said, I know who you are. 
Jimmy says, uh, heads, up, heads up. Jimmy says, Jimmy says, I, I, uh, seen, I seen your videos on, on Facebook. I go, you see my videos? I, I watch yours all the time. I said, I'm a uh, retired policeman. I, I'm, I'm looking for something to do. Oh, I'm sorry. He said, do you want a job? And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I'll, t- I'll teach you everything. I, d- I go, Jimmy, I just, I just use a uh, iPhone and a, and, a, and a tripod. He's like, uh, I'll hire you. I'll teach you everything I know how to do. He goes, uh, in, in no time, you'll be as good as me. So that was it, man. I, shortly thereafter, I um, was working for him. He was paying me. And I said, you know what? Hold, hold on to my pay. I'm, I'm not rich, but I was in a position where... I have a pension. I'm paying my bills. I said, hold on to my pay. When, when I accumulate enough income to buy my own equipment, let's do that. He said, perfect. So, in other words, I was, I was using Jimmy's equipment. So, not too long after that, I, developed, I, I, I acquired enough income to purchase my own uh, cameras, sound equipment, uh, laptop. It was about... All in all, a little over $5,000, I'm guessing, in equipment. So now this is all mine. Um, I asked Jimmy shortly thereafter that if I could buy 5 or 10% of the company. I liked the direction of the company. And he said, I'm not interested in giving up any of my equity in the company yet. I said, okay. I said, when you are. I want to be first. I said, in the meantime, I'll continue just making an income. And I felt bad that I was making money off the company. He wasn't, right? There was very little money coming in. And he was paying me to stream, continue streaming for him. As he did this background stuff. And then one day we had a meeting. He says, "Uh, okay, I'm not going to pay you anymore. I said, oh, okay. Um, Am I being let go? He says, no. I want to make you a partner. So I get a little emotional when I talk about this because I, I was very, it was a very exciting day for me. Trust me, when, when it, you tell this old man, uh, you just hit the, you've just been offered the opportunity to do what you love to do as a career. And I said, absolutely, I'm, I'm in, 100%, I'm in. So here I am uh, a year later. Uh, 49 percent, uh, not quite a fifty percent, forty-nine percent partner in, in the business, and um, my role in the company is streaming, sponsor acquisitions, and merch sales, merchandising. Jimmy handles all of the business end of it, so you can imagine everything that's involved in running a business. Jimmy does all of that. So don't think that because you don't see him on the camera much, he's not involved. He's very, very, very much involved in this company. So uh, more so than me. I'm just the streaming. I'll sell you a towel and a glove. And uh, I keep track of the the sponsorships. All those logos on the left, those are our sponsors. Uh, Let's take a moment to recognize them for a moment as Jeff fires his seven ball and Leaves the eight ball cherry. Brian Kara has a straight in eight ball for the win. This puts them on nine. Pretty impressive so far, Peter. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Uh, So our sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. Jared Frieders from... uh, Oh, I just had the name of the city in my my head. Hey, what's up, Lane? Uh, Jared Frieders from American Hustler Apparel in uh, Fort Fort Dodge, Iowa. Uh, Dan Anderson from Atlas Supplies, Atlas Billiard Supplies 
in Wheeling, Illinois. Gil Castillo from Castillo Leather Goods uh, in Oak Lawn, Illinois. Digital Pool. Look for a stronger collaboration of Digital Pool and Calcutta Kid TV in the future. Um, Tom Van Eck from IQClinic.com. Tom created a targeting system on a cue ball. Very clever design. Go to IQClinic.com to learn how to spin to win. Pat's Billiard Supplies, Pat's Billiard and Dart Supplies out of Pockets, uh, Pockets Billiards in Oak, uh, Crestwood, Illinois. Pat Prendergast is a uh, sponsor of, of uh, Calcutta Kid TV and a longtime friend of mine, as well as Gil Castillo. Uh, Stefan Supporta, our uh, civil litigation attorney from Joliet. He can help you with things like mortgage foreclosure assistance, medical malpractice, and, uh, and other civil lawsuits. Not criminal. However, if you do need that type of attorney, give Stefan Supporta a call, supportalawoffices.org. No, supportalawoffices.com. And uh, he knows quite a few people in the industry. He can help you in that area. And uh, lastly on our, on our screen is uh, Bill Filippiak from WAF Custom Q Holders. Uh, Bill Filippiak is not only a friend but also a sponsor of Calcutta Kid TV. And he makes high-end wooden custom cue holders. So if you're the kind of guy that spends, oh, 75 bucks for a cue stick, you probably won't be in the market for one of Bill Filippiak's cue holders. But if you're a guy like me, who has a $3,000 Davini, um, you'll spend 150 200 bucks, 300 whatever, for a uh, custom cue holder uh, made of the same types of wood that your cue stick is made of. And uh, I have a design here somewhere. I want to show you one that we're going to be raffling off tomorrow. Um, if you give me a moment, I'll do it right now. Uh, Blaine was just here to say hello, but I was in the middle of uh, paying some bills, and I didn't want to short shortchange any of my sponsors, any of our sponsors, excuse me. Let me just show you this picture of the cue holder that he made for us. It's right back here somewhere. All right, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and email this one to uh, me, uh, pool coach. There we go. Q holders. Send. All right. In the background, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to email myself a picture, uh, download it on my computer, and then save it to my stream so I can show you guys what Bill Flippiak makes. Uh, when Gil Castillo comes back from Mexico, he's in, he's in Mexico right now on business. When he comes back, uh, I'm going to show you what he makes regarding... Uh, Q cases, very, very, very high-end Q cases, very well made. Uh, save as desktop WAF. Okay, save and go here. Uh, Lisa, I have them for sale. Uh, if you're serious about the uh, the uh, Tom Van Eck uh, IQ balls. I have them. Um, he, he sells them on his website, iqclinic.com, for $35. Uh, otherwise, I sell them for 40 And the reason why I sell them for $5 more is, number one, I can, I can make a little bit of money on them. And number two, I'm, I'm bringing them to you. Oh, Lisa has one. Okay. Uh, I, I, bring them, I bring them to the, to the pool halls. Let me come over here and show you what. All right. Static image. Oh, 
Why didn't it save? Why didn't it save? Okay, that's why. to do something first before I do that. Pardon me. Play off that uh, one ball. Well, that's not working. So, sorry, Billy. I have to. Can't. I can't do that. Um. I don't know why I'm having trouble with that. It's not sending as a um, picture. It's sending as a website. So. Let me do this. Bing. There. I think I just cheated it. There we go. Now it's a picture. All right, well, that's not working, so I'll have to wait till tomorrow for that. My bad. <clears throat> Bradley Billiard Club is up 9 to 3 in a race to 11 to chalk it up. Amber, if you're listening, did you make it back to Chicago or Indiana yet? Make sure my daughter's okay. Never stop being a dad, right?
Watch the uh, watch the hit on the five. Fourteen. Oh, perfect. Oh, wow. Uh, Bill Filippiak says, check my email. Let me try it again. He, ho he heard that whole thing. I was having trouble. For some reason, when I saved it, Bill, it was going as a web page, not a, not a, um, a picture. thing over. 12? Look on this side, okay? Don't worry about that side. Look on this side. Flip, flip one up. Is it, is it right? Okay, good. All right, Bill, I got it. I got it. Why, why couldn't I get I, I, the pictures I hit? No, it still says web page. Isn't that weird? And I can't change the file type. Uh, send me a, um, it says JPEG. Download it. Are you sending me a zip, a zip file? Yeah. I think that's what it is, a zip file. Uh, allow, allow. And then. Shoot. All right, Bill, we'll have to work on this tomorrow. I, it's, it's a zip file. It's not just a picture, it's, it's, a, it's a zip of a picture. And uh, when I try to open it, it opens as a web page. It's not working, so uh, it'll have to wait till tomorrow. I'll figure it out. What I'll probably do, uh, Bill, is I'll take a picture of it with my phone, so it, it's not a zip file. It's just a picture itself. Yeah, in the email it is. Um, in the email it is. In, in the email it is for sure. Um, So, here's how it looks. All right, Bill, I just sent you a picture. Uh, I'm just attaching a picture. I took on my phone. Yeah. So um, I sent you a picture and it shows you how it's, it's, it says download attachments as a zip file. I can't save them as a single file, nor do I know how. I think I just figured it out. Hold on. Oh, man, are you going to be happy with me? Look at that. That's, that's the cue holder I've been trying to get a picture of. That's the cue holder made by Bill Flippiak, a walnut with our uh, patch stuck onto it. And it's uh, epoxied, and he's got um, suede leather inside the knuckles 
to protect the acoustic. Um, that's just one uh, vision of it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that back, and we're going to watch some pool. So I finally got it built. I don't know what the heck I was doing, but got it now. I got it, Lisa. Thank you. I got it. You know, you would think that I went to Bogan High School. It was a, it was a computer technical school. I would be better at computers. Nope. This is the eight ball for the win. Eight ball for the win. Here we go. Bradley Billiard Club defeats. Chalk it up by a score of 11 to 3. Handshakes go around the room. And I will be broadcasting out of here, Bradley Billiard Club, tomorrow. Um, you, you did, you, Andy, you did say 9.30. You did say 9.30. Uh, I will be broadcasting live here tomorrow uh, for Eric Turner's um, Christmas Extravaganza Scotch Doubles. Tomorrow's not a Scotch Triples, it's a Scotch Doubles. And tomorrow will be APA rules. So if you're not familiar with those, I'll explain those tomorrow. Okay? So uh, here we are. We're finished for tonight. I may play... Um, Adam Thomas Cunnington, uh, a little bit of pool, but all right, Lisa, that's okay. We'll catch up some other time. Andy, can I have good luck to everybody tomorrow? I won't be able to make it there. Okay, all right. You know what? I, I appreciate you uh, keeping track on the stream and uh, keeping the comments going and, and the uh, engagement lively. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to sign off here the right way. I'm John Enigas. This is Eric Turner. Uh, we thank you both for, for uh, spending your, your, uh, your Friday night with us. On behalf of um, American Hustler, Atlas Billiard Supply, Castillo Leather Goods, Digital Pool, IQClinic.com, Pets, Billiards, and Dart Supplies, Stefan Support of Law Offices.com, and... Bill Filippi at Custom Q Holders. I am John Eney Guest. So long, everyone. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. I'll see you. The rest of you, I'll see you tomorrow. You want someone else out here?